now we will talk about question number 11 and this one is what do you mean by GMO, GMOs, GMO, this was not explained in the chapter and definitely this is an extra part which is not there in the syllabus, but this is also related to the cells, the genes. So, what is the meaning of this? Actually, this means genetically modified organism. It means genetically, genetically modified organism. What is GMO? It is genetically it is genetically modified organism, but what is the meaning of this? Actually these kind of organisms are made by genetic engineering. These kind of organisms are made by genetic engineering, but what, what it is? So, actually they, the, we all know the chromatin, the DNA are the part which is responsible, DNA is responsible for the transfer of genetic material from one generation to another generation. Now, the DNA of the organisms are removed and these are mismatched that means, DNA from the different organisms are taken which is not possible in the natural course, naturally this is not possible and these DNAs are merged and then uh, new species can be formed. Now, this is very very important when uh, genetic engineering say for example, if, uh, it is when it is done in the bacteria. Now, by using this process of genetic engineering and when the bacteria of a certain particular kind were made these bacteria were used for the uh, well being of the human beings. How? These bacteria were used to produce many proteins which are of human uh, use. Even insulin can be made by certain different process of genetic engineering. When the genetic engineering uh, like uh, this process is being done on many organisms like ships, rat, pig and all these organisms when the new species were formed these were just that you know it was done for the sake of the experiments, but uh, and it is not a process which can be done in one day, one year, two years it takes it is a long continuous process which needs lots of experiments uh, to be conducted and lots and lots of patients and even money too. So, what is the meaning of GMOs? GMOs means the genetically modified organism that means an organism whose genetic material is modified, modified for what? Modified for human welfare or modified for the use of humans. Now, when we talk about bacteria, bacteria are definitely we know many kinds of bacteria and the uh, bacteria uh, like many bacteria are useful at the same time many bacteria are harmful. Due to genetic engineering the DNA of certain strains was mixed and new species <coughs> of uh, bacteria was formed which was responsible to create lot of different kinds of proteins. This process is very very helpful in the field of medical agriculture uh, you know even the uh, in the case of plants genetic engineering is done and new greater uh, useful or more productive varieties are being formed. So, how can we define this GMOs are the genetically modified organism which is formed by the genetic engineering and it is done by what? It is done by the merging of DNA, it is done for the human use in which fields in the fields of medical, agriculture and this
this one is used for uh, the production of you know different kinds of proteins or whatsoever. So, even this is done this process is done in many organisms like pig, ship, rat and etcetera actually many are there. So, this, uh, this is the meaning of the GMOs. By merging of DNA new organism is made which is not possible naturally and this is done for the sake of the, uh, the, the you know the like good things can be brought up the use of this process is uh, you know uh, we cannot even imagine the use of this, but definitely then it is very very time consuming and money consuming process. Now, we will move to the next question this was answer number 11. Now, we will move to the question number 12. So, answer 12. Now, this one is cell is a structural and functional unit of life what happens when cells die. As now when again again we are saying that cell is a living living structure it is a part of a living organism and it is a smallest living part of any living organism. And even I have discussed we have discussed this thing that when the cell is removed from certain tissues the cell wall, the cell all these cell which were removed from the tissues were able to survive. But when the organelles or from the cell was taken out like take the example of the uh, the mitochondria or the Golgi bodies when these all these organelles were removed out from the cell these organelles collapsed and they were not able to survive independently. That is the reason the cells are known as a, the you know the smallest living part of any organism. So, the question is what was the question? Uh, yeah, cell is a structure and function of life uh, what happens when the cell dies. So, I was saying that when the cell shows all the living processes cell divides cell grows it needs nutrition. So, obviously, a cell will die also and what will happen or what happens when a cell dies? nothing nothing happens when a cell dies. the old cell is replaced by the new cell. This is the thing which the uh, cell theory says the last postulate Rudolf Wachow says that what he said he said that every cell arises from a pre existing cell. This is the application of the cell theory cell theory says that a cell arises from the pre existing cell and every and you know this is a very normal process many many cells die in the body it is a continuous process cell keeps on dying, but it does not mean the organism will collapse. A cell dies and a new cell takes its place position. So, a cell die and its place is taken by the new cell and how new cell is formed new cell is formed by the uh, process of cell division. So, when a cell die new cell takes its place. So, this one is a very common thing which is seen in the living organism that a cell will not leave for many days many years it depends upon the cell. So, cell keeps on dying and the cell is replaced by the a dead cell is replaced by the new cell and that is what the cell theory says that a cell arises from a pre existing cell that means, cell keeps on dividing cell keeps on dividing and if we want to define cell division. How the cell divides cell divides with the process of the cell division. So, how can we define cell division this is a process this is a process in which a cell 
divides and a new or young cell is formed now we'll talk about next question that is question number 13 so this is now question num answer number 13 and what is the question uh, what is the unit of measuring the size of a cell so it is micrometer it is micrometer and this micrometer is millionth part of a meter this micrometer is millionth part of a meter i will write over here that it is it is a millionth part of the meter so this is the smallest unit or we can say that this this small structures are measured in the with the help of this small unit micrometer and uh, it is a million part of the meter because we all know that the structure of the cell or the size of the cell rather <coughs> size of the cell is very very small and to measure such small size we need to have a very small unit and that is a micrometer and micrometer uh, is the millionth part of a meter now we'll talk about the next answer and this one is is size of a cell related to its function is size of a cell related to its function or uh, size and shape rather size of a cell size and shape of a cell is related to its function definitely the size and uh, shape of a cell is related to its function take the example of the blood cell the wbcs are irregular why wbcs are irregular because the function of the wbc is to clean to engulf the uh, microorganisms to uh, clear up the foreign bodies now the size the shape of the foreign bodies varies even the size of the bacteria is vary and that is the reason the size, the shape of the wbcs like wbcs are irregular structure and they can change themselves uh, according to the size of the foreign bodies or the size of the microorganisms or the size of the any enemy which is trying to attack our body take the example of the neurons neurons are very long structure neurons are long structure because it has to give the 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 uh, function of the uh, nerve cells is the transmission of the messages to give and take the messages and this has to be done from the right from the head even from to the tip of the nail till the toes it has to be done and so these has to be long structure and that is the reason it is very very long so shape and size uh, of the cell definitely affects like it is because of the function of the cell talk about the uh, cells which are present on the skin the it becomes flat the surface area get increased we'll talk about the the answer only uh, please let me dust this then we will talk about the answer number 14 now we'll talk about next question that is answer number i think so it is 14 so the question is uh, does the shape and size of a cell depends upon its function so yeah it depends so we'll write over here yes the size and shape of a cell depends upon its function then 
how does it depends upon function take the example of nerve cell take the example of the nerve cells we all know nerve cells are the longest cell in the body nerve cells are the longest cell in the body because their function is to transmit the messages from uh, right from the top to the bottom of the body that is the reason these cells are very very like long cells are long i will write tail here tails are long because it gives messages i'll write here it transmits the messages because it takes and gives the messages like the messages are given from the brain and even sent from the brain so this has to be tall so definitely here we can see that the function of a cell is totally affecting the size of the cell come to the next one if we talk about the skin cells these cells are flat and thus surface area increases again the shape is because of the function now if we take the next example muscle cell muscle cells are spindle spindle shape due to their shape it becomes easy for them to contract and relax contraction and relaxation of a cell becomes easy because of their spindle shape and again we can see that the function of the cell is affecting the structure of the cell if we talk about the next one just now we have discussed wbcs are irregular now why wbcs are irregular because their function is to digest the foreign bodies to kill the microorganisms and the shape and size of those microorganisms are not known to the wbcs it cannot it won't be always in a fixed shape and size that is the reason again the function of the wbc is affecting is shape and size and that is the reason the wbcs are of irregular shape wbc is what is the function engulfing or digesting or killing microorganisms or the foreign bodies i don't have place and so i'm not writing in detail so we can see over here the uh, muscle cell the skin cells the nerve cells are very very long because they have to give the messages skin cells are flat because the surface area has to be increased muscle cells are spindle shape which helps them to contract and relax at the same time wbcs are of irregular shape so this is the uh, examples of few cells if we talk about other cells again they will be related in one or the other way to their functions so this question uh, what was the question that the size and the shape of the function uh, <laughs> size and the shape of the function no children size and shape of a cell uh, depends upon the function of the cell so this is a correct statement and it is true that the shape and size of a cell truly depends upon the function of the cell now we'll talk about the next answer answer number 15 i suppose i'll read the question why do plant cells have large vacuoles while discussing the vacuoles also i discuss this point that 
plants do not have any specific other organs to store food particles or even certain waste materials and that is the reason the cell has got big vacuoles and this is a very uh, uh, remarkable feature of the vacuoles uh, cell plant cell as soon as the cell is examined under the microscope and a vacuole is seen a big vacuole uh, it becomes very sure that the cell belongs to a plant. So, first point can be that cell uh, has a big vacuole for the reason that plants do not have any specific organs to store or to uh, store the food particles and the waste. The other point can be to maintain the turgor pressure. These two points are important turgor pressure will be explained to you in one of the chapter. So, the plants have big vacuoles as they do not have any specific organ for the collection or storage of food or waste particles. Second point can be to maintain the turgor pressure. To maintain the turgor pressure. That is the reason the plant cells have a bigger vacuole. Now, we will talk about the next question. Now, question number 16. If the cell wall was present in animals cells too. I will repeat. If the cell wall was present in animal cells too, how do you think our appearance would change? This is very interesting answer. What is the function of the cell wall? Cell wall is present in plants. Why? Not in animals. First of all, the plants need more protection because they cannot move or walk or protect themselves like us as we can do. Cell wall give them a specific tough rigid structure. Whereas, the body of the animal is animals is quite flexible. The stem cannot turn here and there. The branches cannot be folded. If we consider for some time that if cell body the presence of cell body just feel the presence of cell wall in the body of the animals definitely the body would have become more rigid more tough more harder and the movements would have become next to impossible and so it would have become a greatest disadvantage for the animals and that is the reason it is not present in our body so the question was what would have happened or what if the cell wall was or if it would have been present in animals also. So, we will just discuss the answer in detail, just I will clean this first, uh, it would not be able to read. Okay. So, we will talk about this answer, we will discuss now answer number 16 and it is what if the animal cell would have uh, got cell wall. So, definitely the presence of cell wall, presence of cell wall will make the body of animals, the body of animals more rigid, hard 
and the movements will be impossible. So that's what I explained that the presence of cell wall in the plants is because the, the plant need more protection, they have the plants need to stand erect, the plants need to stand erect and uh, has to be rigid, tough, strong and who helps that? Uh, it is uh, this work is being done by the cell wall. If we talk about the animals, uh, question can be you know thrown in this way also. If I say that the plants need, need to stand erect, need to be tough and hard, so we do not need, even we need, but we have skeleton in our bodies. We have skeleton in our body which makes us tough, hard, strong, it helps us to you know stand, it, help, it helps us to be erect, it helps us in many ways to keep, it keeps, it gives a framework to our body. That framework, that skeleton that or the bones are not present in the plants. All these structure is not present in the plants and all these, uh, the work of all these structure is being done by the cell wall, the presence of the cell wall. That means the cell wall acts like a skeleton of the plants. It make it stiff, no, erect, tough, hard, strong. But this is not at all required in plants as we already have skeleton which is made up of bones. And if such kind of cell wall is, uh, you know, if God gets angry one day and he started uh, giving a cell wall, what will happen? The movements in the, plant, in the, in the animals will become very, very uh, difficult. We will not be able to move uh, freely as we are doing it now. So, even a question, you know, one new question can be framed that what is a, uh, like why the plants do not have skeleton? Because they have cell wall. So, this is how the cell wall works in plants. It makes it the structure rigid, firm, hard, strong and uh, it you know makes it uh, safe also. But as it is done not required in the animals and so it is not present in the animals. So this was our answer number 16th and now we will talk about the answer number 17th. Explain the term organs and organelles. Explain the term organ and organelles. We all know how organs are made. Organs are made by the what? Tissues. We all know cells they combine, they form tissues, tissues combine and they form organs and organs combine and they form organ system and then a body is formed. Organs are very, very important. Organs are very, very important because organs only make organ system and organ system only make a body. So, organ is very, very important in a body. What about organelles? Organelles are the small, tiny structures which are present inside the cell. Small, tiny structure. present in a cell. So, what are the organelles? Organelles are the very, very small minute structures as we all know even the cell is only very minute, cell is only microscopic. Just imagine all the structures, the cell, the, org, the part which is present inside the cell and these minute structures which are present in the cell are what organelles. Are organelles important? Definitely. Organelles have same importance in the cell 
which kind of importance as the organs are important for a body organs just now i said that organs are very very important because organ, uh, organs only made the the organs only forms the body in the same way the organelles the organelles are only one which forms the cell if you remove the cell organelles from the cell if you remove the cell organelles from the cell cell will not be able to function cell will not be able to function so for a smooth functioning for a body to be there for a body to be there organs are required for a body to be there organs are required in the same way for a cell to be in existence for a cell to be to come into an existence the organelles of the cells are required so organelles are of same they keep the same importance uh, as the organs keep or the organs have in the body of an organism so this is the basic difference between the organs and organelles organs are the part uh, organs are made up of tissues and different organs they form organ system and organ system makes a body a cell contains various tiny structure and these tiny structures are known as organelles and these organelles is responsible for the smooth functioning of the cell a cell can function well when all the cell organelles are functioning properly if the cell organelles are not functioning properly then even a cell will not be able to function now this was the 17th answer now uh, we will talk about the gist of the all organelles and their function in one line like uh, whatever ribosomes in one line what is the function of the ribosome protein synthesis mitochondria liberation of energy endoplasmic reticulum protein synthesis so we'll have that and i will try to write everything in one uh, uh, you know in very short and specific way so this just will help uh, in revision and to understand uh, the chapter very well so that will be our last answer and uh, even uh, there's no need of framing the question for that just the organelles or the whatever structure is present in the cell Uh, a cell contains cell membrane cell wall cytoplasm nucleus and cell inclusions the non living part of the cell so all those in one line and their function very specific function so we'll discuss and talk about that now we'll talk about the functions of the structures of the uh, cell first of all the cell membrane or plasma membrane here we are writing about the function and this side this is the part of the cell part of a cell what is the function of a cell membrane or the plasma membrane it is to provide shape and size plasma membrane or cell membrane provides shape and size to the cell and it also check the entry and exit of the materials it also gives protection i am writing to the point it also gives protection come to the next one 
cell wall. We all know now this is only present in the plants. Again, give protection. And we can say give rigidity and strength to the plant body. Cell wall main is protection and rigidity and strength it gives to the cell. I am not discussing this in detail because we have already discussed all this organelles in detail previously only we have done this. Come to the third one cytoplasm. What does cytoplasm do? All the organelles are present in it, all the organelles are present in the cytoplasm. So, all organelles are present in it and metabolic reactions takes place here because of cytoplasm metabolic reactions I am writing in short metabolic reactions. Now, Now, we will talk about the next one, fourth one, mitochondria. Mitochondria is responsible for the release of energy, release of energy. It is responsible for the release of energy. We will talk about the fifth one now. We can talk about endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum. It plays very important role in the protein synthesis. So, protein synthesis. function is to make protein and thus protein synthesis. I can also add ribosomes over here as ribosomes are also related to the same function. So, I can also write ribosomes here. Now, if I write Golgi bodies If I write Golgi bodies, then synthesis secretion and store or storage of the enzymes of the enzymes. So, when we talk about Golgi bodies, synthesis, secretion and storage of the enzymes. Come to the next one, seventh one, seventh one, vacuoles. Vacuoles are responsible for storing food and waste particles. Now, next one can be lysosomes. We all know lysosomes are responsible for the intracellular digestion. 
intracellular digestion or even the digestion of uh, a cell when the cell is not functioning properly or even the digestion of the foreign particles. This is a function of the lysosomes. Talk about plastids. Plastids we all know these are the pigments present in the plant cell. There are various kinds of plastids and so their function also varies. Their function is photosynthesis. even storage and also giving color imparting color imparts color. So, this is about the plastids so this is about the plastids lysosomes now we talk about the tenth one nucleus the star it is a controller of the cell controller of the cell means it functions like it is the one which controls all the functions we can write uh, in cell division everything means what all the activities are uh, due to the nucleus and we will not detail over here just by writing the controller you can understand what things are being controlled by the nucleus. Centrosome again it helps in the cell division participates in the cell division. Just by uh, looking at all these we can understand the functions of all the structures which are present inside the cell. Again I have not written the functions of the parts of the nucleus like nuclear pore, nuclear membrane. Uh, maybe chromatin fibers I can write here chromosomes and genes chromosomes what does chromosomes and genes do transmission of the genetic information from one generation to another from one generation there is no place now to another just by having a look on this chart we can understand the functions of all the part or all the things which is present inside the cell or which covers the cell, the cell wall, the cell membrane, uh, cell membrane, plasma membrane, cell wall, cytoplasm, mitochondria, endoplasma, reticulum, ribosomes, Golgi bodies, vacuoles, lysosomes, plastids, nucleus, centrosome and chromosomes or genes. By just looking at this chart we can have an idea of what all are the functions of the uh, these structure. So, this was all about this chapter uh, hope you will understand the chapter proper uh, you will by just by seeing this uh, answers and by the discussion what we had you will be able to understand the chapter properly.